Hey guys, today we're going to do a video about how to name and how to write more of the complicated ionic compounds which involve metals that are in the transition metals block or also in the other metals, which I will also show you where to find on your periodic table. So, before we move forward, let's figure out where are these transition metals and these other metals. So, the transition metals here, which are conveniently uh, drawn in pink, so these ones here are the transition metals, and the other metals are the metals that live below the staircase underneath the non-metals. So those things there are the other metals. So knowing those two things, uh, I need to tell you a few aspects about it. You might remember from previous chemistry uh, classes, if not a chemistry video, uh, that when you read a periodic table, uh, if you want to determine what kind of charge this uh, any particular atom will uh, will turn into when it becomes an ion, you just uh, look it up by the group number. So I've got group number one here. So when they become ions, they become a positive one charge. The second group becomes a positive two charge. See group two, positive two, group one, positive one. And you skip the transition metals across and you go to boron and that will form a three, uh, a three plus charge. Then you get to carbon because Remember how most elements, they want to get a full set of electrons in the outermost shell. And for most of them, they want eight in the outermost shell. So when you get to number four, you're kind of in the halfway point. And it's not really easier to lose all of them. And it's not really easier to gain another four of them. So they don't really form charges. Uh, so carbon doesn't really count. When you get to the other side, so you now have, uh, say, three more electrons to go, you'll become a three negative ion. So here we got nitrogen it'll be a negative three charge. And we've got oxygen will be negative two charge. Uh, fluorine will be a negative one charge. And the last group here has a zero charge because they have already got their full set of electrons. There's no incentive, incentive for them to steal or uh, donate away any of their electrons to, abstain, to obtain a more stable electron configuration. So knowing that, knowing that rule and remembering that, back to the transition metals. Transition metals don't behave like these regular nice rules that the rest of the periodic table does. So, you know, every magnesium atom will always be positive two. Every nitrogen atom will always form a negative three charged ion. However, when you get to transition metal uh, um, ions, copper here, as an example, can be positive one or positive two. It can have a variety of charges and some have even more varieties. So it gets a bit confusing. And the way that we try and account for this uh, variability of these charges is to notate them with Roman numerals. So let's get started. It'll make more sense when we do some examples. Okay, let's look at this. We've got uh, a formula here, iron sulfide. So if we find iron, which is over here in our predict table, it's in the transition metal block. So it can have a positive two charge or a positive three charge. Uh, we don't know. But we also have sulfur, which comes from here in the periodic table. Sulfur, when it becomes an ion, it always obeys the rule, which is a negative two charged ion. And from here, we put on our detective caps and work our way backwards. So if I take this and I say, well, iron here, we don't know what charge it has yet, but we'll work it out later. Sulfur, on the other hand, we know forms a two negative charge. Now, since the written formula here, and this goes for most uh, chemical formulas, they don't have charges written on them. And that's because they are neutrally charged. And this makes sense because they are quite stable when they reacted to form a compound. So if it's neutrally charged overall, something must be cancelling out these two negative charges. It's our iron atom, and there's only one of them. So that iron atom must be a two positive charge. Therefore, we can start writing its name. Iron. Roman numerals to denote the, the oxidation state. So sometimes these charges above a, uh, a metal are sometimes referred to as oxidation states. It's got a two plus charge. Therefore, we will write the Roman numeral two. One, two. And we write the rest of the uh, compound as per usual. So sulfide. All right, let's do the next example. Here we've got iron again and sulfur. However, they, it's a slightly different compound. Let's do it again. So the process is we write down our, our atoms one at a time. There's iron. We don't know what charge it has. It could be two or plus three. 
We don't know. We have three sulfur atoms. So um, these three sulfide ions, they are each carrying a two negative charge. So three times two negatives gives a total of six negative charges. Somehow that has to be divided, uh, has to be uh, cancelled out by the two iron um, cations. So if there's two of them, so six negatives divided by two metal atoms, therefore each one must be carrying a positive three charge. Here we go. So therefore we write the name iron brackets one, two, three sulfide. Next we move on to copper. Copper uh, lives over here in the periodic table. It can be a positive 1 or it could be a positive 2. So let's determine using our trick. So we work our way backwards. Copper, we don't know. But chloride we can find on the table. There's two of those by the way. Two chloride ions. When they become ions they all each form a negative 1 charge. So if there's two of them that makes a two negative total charge from the chloride ions. So the copper must be balancing this out. So therefore, the copper must be positive two charge. Therefore, we can write the name copper brackets to chloride. Let's do the next one. So we got lead bromide. So we find lead in our periodic table. I think it is found there. And we've got bromide, which lives there. So lead lives in the group known as the other metals. It's not really a fancy name, but they're the ones who live underneath the staircase. Bromide, uh, bromine, uh, when it forms an ion, it becomes bromide. And it always forms a plus, uh, always forms a negative one charge. So we can use our detective skills again. So we got our lead atom there. We don't know the charge yet. Two bromide ions. Each one of them is worth negative one. So that adds up to a negative two charge overall. Got to balance that out with the lead atom somehow. So the lead uh, cation must be two positive. So therefore it's lead two bromide. That's an E. All right, let's do the other process. So we've gone from formula to name. Now let's try the process where we go from name and then write the formula. So in Photoshop, I'll just hide this layer here and I'll open up this layer here. So we got tin and some Roman numeral number, fluoride. So how do you work out what this one means? If there's a little stick before a particular V symbol, it means uh, one before five. So the number that comes before five must be four. So this must be, now if I, got, I have to find it on the periodic table. So 10 is this little symbol here. Pardon, I'm on the wrong layer. 10 is located here on the periodic table, on this part of the other metals. And we've also got fluorine, which has formed a uh, ion. So it's fluoride, so it's a negative one charge. I'll just fill in these as well, just so we don't forget. Um, so here we go, Sn. The 4 there is telling us the oxidation state of the metal. So it has become a plus 4 charge. So let's write that on. 4 plus. And we've got fluorine or fluorides. And each one of those are negative 1 charge. So somehow the fluorines, the fluoride, are ca sorry, I'm getting those words confused. Please forgive me. The fluoride ions are somehow cancelling, uh, balancing out the charges from the tin cation. So if there's four positives for uh, on one side, we need to have four negatives somehow. And if, in F, if every fluoride is worth one negative, then we will need four lots of them to balance the formula out. So there we go. We can write it neatly. SNF4. Let's do the next one. Iron. So we find iron again. Iron lives over here in the periodic table. Iron is Fe. Iron 3, therefore it's got a 3 plus charge. And we've mixed that with nitride. Nitride comes from nitrogen, which is over here in the periodic table, and it forms a negative 3 charge. 
if we look at this example, the positives and the negatives already balance out, uh, already cancel each other out. So there's no, uh, mul there's no needing to do any more work here. So we can just write it as F E N. Because it's already done. Copper one sulfide. So here we go. We got to write copper. Copper is found over here again. Copper one. Therefore, copper has a charge of positive one. So we'll write that on. One positive and sulfide, which uh, lives over here. It forms a negative two charged anion. So that'll be two negative. Somehow that's got to bounce. That's got to can. Uh, that's got to balance such that it's neutral overall. So that two negative must be balanced by two copper atoms. So we put a two down here, copper, two of those, and one sulfur um, atom. All right, I hope this helps. Uh, don't forget to check out my other videos where I explain the uh, what, how ionic bonds are formed, uh, how ions are made, and how to predict if you've got an ionic compound, and there are other things too. All right, see you later. Bye.